Representative, have you heard about this little incident or this incident that took or this issue that took place at Mar-a-Lago and Trump talking to his guests about their feelings on abortion and vice presidencies? Uh, Eric, I'm actually hearing about it for the first time from you, so thanks for getting me up to date. Uh, look, I understand where a lot of people are, what President Trump is thinking. We do have to be sober and realize that the Democrats have weaponized abortion against us in the midterm election cycle. They want to do the same thing in 2024. So we have to really be mindful of where the country is. Since Roe v. Wade has gone away, and frankly, that was the right decision, it was a terrible court decision to begin with, the country, whether you're just Americans overall or Democrats, independents, Republicans, everybody's really starting to figure out what their true positions are on abortion. I think from the federal level, we should actually not engage in the topic at all. This is now a state issue. Every state's going to make their decision. You're going to have states that are going to be like California and New York and Illinois. In those states, the decision is already done. Florida just had a decision uh, made with Governor DeSantis. Um, Texas has made a decision. You have ballot initiatives moving through a, through a lot of states. The American people are going to weigh in on this. This is one of the most personal issues, obviously, for women, but really for our country, it should be handled through state le through state level uh, government and politics, not the federal level. Our federal government has to be fo focused on the major things, the big things facing America, our debt, our spending, foreign policy, et cetera. This is something that should be left to the states. I think that as we move through the next couple of election cycles, you'll get to a medium of where people are in America. That is the correct answer, my friend. That is the only way to handle that question. Let the states decide. You don't like what your state's doing. You can move or change your, your government in, in the state that, that you do live by by vote. And that's, that's the way to answer that. Um, Congressman, you wanted to talk a little bit about something happening uh, regarding January 6th. Tell us, tell us about that. Well, what we're finding out, and this is through the leadership of Speaker Johnson and Barry Loudermick, who's the, who is the subcommittee chairman under House Admin under Brian Stile of Wisconsin, we're finding out that, A, the January 6th committee deleted information, they got rid of, got rid of information they collected. You're finding out now that Cassidy Hus Hutchison was spun up by Liz Cheney and others to deliver a phony story that was debunked. We already knew that the whole J6 production was just a media sham and a farce for the radical left. We already knew that. But now you know that uh, they were meeting with Fannie Willis and her team uh, trying to give back channel information to, to the Georgia, uh, to the Fulton County District Attorney, who, by the way, is having all kinds of problems herself. They were back channeling information to her. This demonstrates very clearly that you had congressional dem Democrats um, and some useful Republicans. Unfortunately, they did the wrong thing, and it was terrible. That's why they're no longer in Congress, speaking to Liz Cheney specifically, working with radical Democrats working with some of these prosecutors. The entire purpose has been to get Trump. It is wrong. This is fascism at its finest. This is what we're seeing right now. It's destructive of our, of our institutions. So this stuff can't be tolerated. So I commend House administration and the speaker for bringing this information to the public. And we need to go further. We need to follow all this stuff because you can't have rogue committees set up that are extremely partisan and then using that information to basically sidestep swipe a political opponent and then using it in part to go after them legally. This is un-American. It is unconstitutional. And I believe we got to stop it dead in its tracks. Now, since you're one of the people on the short list for Trump, did you hear the short list for RFK Jr., Aaron Rodgers, and all of a sudden the whole world blew up. Aaron Rodgers is potential vice president. You want to weigh in on that, that thought for a second? Listen, man, I just hope A-Rod's Achilles is doing well and he gets back to being the quarterback for the New York Jets because the New York Jets need a lot of help. And that's just the bottom line there. But look, RFK, I get it. He's running. He's not going to win. We all know this. But I think it is indicative of the split that is in the Democrat Party because you have more mainstream Democrat voters in our country, even conservative-leaning Democrat voters in our country. They are watching the master of disaster, Joe Biden, and his agenda wreck our country and wreck our standing around the globe. So I think that's why you're starting to see these people who are from the political left say, you know what, Joe Biden's not the guy. I got to do something. I would tell them to keep going. If Aaron Rodgers wants to be a part of that, that's pretty <laughs> cool. But listening to him and some of his outtakes, he sounds pretty conservative to me. Well, I, I 
Congressman, you, you and I both know uh, at $38.1 million uh, for the upcoming season um, on the active roster, there's 38.1 million reasons why Aaron Rodgers probably would turn down the offer to run alongside RFK2. But we, hey, stranger things have happened. Congressman Byron Donalds, thank you.